This hummingbird cake is tender, moist, and so delicious. If you've never had it before, it's kind of like a banana cake with pineapple and pecans and some spices. Think carrot cake, but banana style. It's so good, I know you're gonna love it. Hi, I'm Lindsay from Life, Love & Sugar, and today we're making a hummingbird cake. So this cake uses the creaming method, so to get started we're going to use our butter and some oil. I find that the combination of butter and oil gives you not only the great flavor you want, but also plenty of moisture. And now we're going to grab our sugars. We've got both brown sugar and white sugar. And we'll cream all of this together for roughly three minutes until everything's light and fluffy. So you should be able to notice a noticeable difference in the color. It'll be much lighter, it'll be fluffier in texture, and that's when you know it's ready to go. The next thing we're gonna do is add our vanilla extract. And then we're gonna add our eggs and egg white, one at a time, mixing well after we add each. Okay, so now we're gonna do our dry ingredients. We've got our all-purpose flour, salt, baking soda, and baking powder. And then we've got our spices. There's some cinnamon and nutmeg. We're gonna whisk all this together. Okay, so now we'll alternate adding our dry ingredients and our mashed banana. So we'll add about half of our dry ingredients, then the mashed banana, and then the rest of the dry ingredients. We'll add our banana. And we'll toss in the rest of our dry ingredients. All right, you wanna mix this until it's all pretty well combined, but you don't wanna over mix it. And we'll add in our pineapple. We've got crushed pineapple here and some toasted pecans. We'll just gently kind of fold and stir all that together. Once all that is well combined, you wanna go ahead and put your cake batter into your cake pans. Okay, so I've got my three cake pans. They've been sprayed with some nonstick baking spray. And I'm gonna add parchment circles in the bottom to keep everything from sticking. All right, so when I add the cake batter to my pans, I actually like to use a scale just so that I know that everything is evenly distributed between the cake pans, but you could also use a measuring spoon. It's just nice to know that they're all evenly dispersed so that they all bake for the same amount of time in the oven. All right, so now you just wanna spread your cake batter out evenly into your pans. All right, now we're just gonna pop these into the oven so they can bake. All right, so while your baked cakes are cooling, we're gonna go ahead and make our cream cheese frosting. We're gonna start with our cream cheese. Then we'll add in some butter. And we'll combine these until they're nice and smooth and creamy. All right, next we're gonna add our powdered sugar. This is an American style cream cheese frosting, so it does use a good bit of powdered sugar, but particularly with the cream cheese frosting, it's important to Add pretty much all of it. Um, it adds volume and stability to your cream cheese frosting, and I know stability is an issue people tend to have trouble with, so you definitely wanna make sure you're adding enough of the powdered sugar so that your cream cheese frosting doesn't get all wonky on you. So we're gonna add little bits of it at a time, probably in three or four batches, and mix it all in there until it's nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the vanilla extract in and mix that, and then we'll add in the last of the powdered sugar. All 
So my kick layers baked pretty flat. If yours have a bit of a dome on them, you may want to trim them so they're nice and flat, but mine are looking pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my frosting. I'm gonna add a cup of cream cheese frosting to the top of this cake layer. Spread this evenly. We'll add our second layer of cake. So we'll add a, another cup of cream cheese frosting to the top of that. So now we'll add our final layer of cake on top. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth out the sides a little bit and then we'll add another cup of frosting to the top of this cake and frost the sides. It doesn't have to be perfect because we'll end up messing with it again later after we frost the sides. But it's nice to get it relatively even and smooth. So to frost the sides of my cake, I like to use the Wilton 789 tip in a large frosting bag. All right, so now I'll use my icing scraper to do the sides of the cake. All right, so your sides don't have to be totally perfect if you're gonna do a little design on the side, which I'm gonna do, but I do like to make sure they're generally pretty straight. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and do the top and corners. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how I frost my cakes, I have one of those. It's just my how to frost a smooth cake with buttercream recipe, and you can definitely check that out. I'm gonna do some little squiggles on the sides with my offset spatula. It's kind of a more rustic look, so it definitely doesn't need to be perfect. All right, so we've got our sides done. I'm just gonna do some piping around the top edge with some shells with my Ateco 844 tip and a nice piping bag. All right, so we've got our shells piped on the top edge of our cake, so now we'll just add some crushed pecans to finish it off and we're ready to go. All right, so there you have your hummingbird cake. It's so delicious, so tender, such a classic cake. If you haven't tried it before, you really should try it. It's so wonderful. You're gonna love it. Seriously, this is for you. For the full recipe, head over to lifeloveandsugar.com. <laughs>